know that's a lot of announcements, but is it exciting what God's doing? And we just had a great release even last Sunday of just healing. And uh, it was really fun. And I just love seeing what God did. So I, I just, uh, and I don't know how they're going to do this. I'm just going to hand the mic over to them and turn them loose. But I just want to say I really appreciate Jesse and Amy Shamp. Uh, this will be the third time they've been with us. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of miracles in the past when they've been here. And I, I love them. I love what God's doing with them. Um, and uh, I didn't recognize Jesse when he came in because he shaved. And, um, but he still looks good, right? <laughs> so I just want to welcome them, turn this over to them, and just turn them loose. And I just want you guys to welcome Jesse, Jesse and Amy Shamp as they come. So, praise God. Awesome. Man, how many excited about Jesus this morning? Praise the Lord. I'm excited. It's good to be with you guys in Oklahoma. I always have to say something about Brums when I'm here because I, I just love Brums. But I um, love being in Oklahoma. Excited to be here. Um, you know, we're, we just love being here with Pastor Jamie, uh, Pastor Andy. They're just amazing. And uh, I really love what they're doing in the region and just what they're building here. And, uh, you know, I remember uh, several years ago when me and Amy were first launching, you know, you guys said, come on in and release what you have. And that's awesome, you know, because their heart is really to raise up the next generation and to make a, a room for the next breed. That God is raising up, Amen. How many know that God's raising up a new breed in this hour? And I'm telling you, it's a breed of miracle workers. It's a breed of prophets. It's a breed of apostles that God is raising up to, um, you know, take ground for the kingdom of God. And we really need that, you know. Uh, we really need that. And so I'm going to get prophetic for a moment. I'm going to share this dream that I had with you just a few weeks ago. Because uh, I really believe it's key. I really believe that this is the heart of the Father in this season and this time. Um, I, I had this dream, and uh, me and Amy were uh, sitting on this platform, and there was a general of the faith. And he came up behind me on the platform. And this is, from, this is in front of a lo large audience of people. And he asked me, he said, how many men or women have raised up 12 sons or daughters under their mantle. And I, I really had to, you know, I was, I was thinking about it. And before I could answer, he said, how many men or women of God raised up a generation under their mantle? And then he looked at me and he said, God is calling you to raise up a generation. And I'm telling you, it hit me in my spirit very powerfully. It's like something poured into my spirit. And I believe that that is the mandate, that we raise up the next generation. And it's so, it's so important that we're intentional about multiplying the anointing. And that's what I really appreciate about Pastor Andy and Pastor Jamie is that they're not just the ones with the microphone, you know, but they're looking to raise up others to go out and release the kingdom of God, to go out and lay hands on the sick and see them recover. It's important that we're intentional about this. Because, see, I can have the anointing. And I can have revelation and I can have all this stuff, but then I go on and be with the Lord and it creates a void. When we could have just multiplied the anointing. Is it okay if I talk about this for a minute? Because I'll tell you, we, we build stuff around a ministry. We build stuff around a man or a woman and then they go be with the Lord and there's no one to take their place. And that mantle is forever gone. What did the prophet Elijah do? It, it, the prophet Elijah gave a double portion to the prophet Elisha. You know, and I think, uh, I think about the parable in the Bible where the master gave out talents to his servants. One servant, he just buried the talent. The other servant went out and multiplied it. They both doubled their talents, but the one just buried it. And the master was very upset because he just buried the talent. Listen, God's calling us to multiply the talents, multiply the anointing. Because, see, 
one person can have a mantle. Pastor Andy can have a mantle, but he can multiply that mantle by bringing others into a school and teaching them what he's received, the breakthroughs that he's received, the impartation that he has. See? It's very, very important. I'm telling you, that is the heart of God in this hour. And I woke up from that dream, and I, I just kept thinking of the story about the prophet Elijah and how he went to the widow woman, and she was in debt. And he said, go and borrow some vessels. And as she did, she only had one vessel of oil, but the oil began to multiply into the other vessels according to how many vessels she had. What are we? We're earthen vessels, right? The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We're called to be containers of the glory of God. We're called to be sponges to receive what others have so that we can go out and multiply the anointing. Man, I'm excited. I'm just excited that they're intentional about raising up the new breed. I know that that is God's heart in this hour, and we are going to see a new breed of miracle workers. Come on, you, you want to know who that breed is? It's people in this room. Come on, it's people attending this, this, this supernatural school that God is birthing and what God is releasing in this region. We need to partner with that. Well, I, I feel very strongly about that. Excuse me while I get excited. Because I, I love pouring into others. You know, I love seeing others do what we do. It's really, it's really awesome. So anyways, enough about all that. I want to talk about my book, Amy and I's book. We wrote this together, uh, Miracles and the Glory. I love that title, Miracles and the Glory. How, how, many, how many of you believing for miracles and the glory this morning? Come on, I'm believing for miracles and the glory. And uh, this is something, you know, me and Amy uh, wrote together, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, all about our journey. And, uh, you know, it's a powerful resource. And it's just packed full of revelation, encounters, miracle signs and wonders that, that we have seen um, as we've traveled. And it's just powerful. Amen. And we just got some really awesome endorsements. Uh, one being Jeff Jansen, who forward, forwarded the book, who's a spiritual father of me and Amy's, and who's really poured into us. And uh, we just have some awesome, awesome endorsements on here. Dr. Robert Slairdon, author of The God's Generals. Love that one. James Gall, Patricia King, uh, Joshua Mills, and uh, Steve Schultz from The Elijah List, who's a really good friend. But... Um, Anyways, I want to give this away to uh, some of our friends that came here this morning. Cat, bless you guys with this. Is it, uh, uh, is it uh, Brandy, right, and James? Jason? How am I getting their names wrong? I'm sorry, I'm missing you guys. Okay, here you go. God bless you. I'm sorry. God bless you with that. I'll just bless you with that. Well, hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Forgetting who our friends are, Amy. Anyways, how, how many else want a copy? Who else wants a copy? Well, they're at the book table. They're $20, so hallelujah. But anyways, those that, those that order, you know, we're going we're gonna to put a prayer of encouragement in there for you. Uh, whatever the Lord gives. And, you know, we'll anoint that book with you with uh, some oil that we have from Israel, directly from Israel. I'm just kidding. I don't have any oil from Israel. That would be cool, though, right? That would be, that would be really cool. Anyways, slap your neighbor high five this morning. Just say shaka bam. So I want to I want to get this message over to you this morning. I just want to jump right into my message because something's really been on my heart, and I just want to release it to you. So I was just thinking about how we all have a destiny. You know, every person in this room, you you have a destiny, you have a calling, you you have a purpose, an assignment that God has given you, a purpose that God has given you. 
And we're all on that journey together. We're all on that journey of entering into our destinies. And it's a battle to enter into what God has called you to do. Because, see, you're the only one that can fulfill your destiny. Nobody can do it for you. God's called you to do something maybe somebody else can't do. So I was just thinking about that. And so I want to just share a little bit of my story with you, a little bit of my journey with you. Uh, you know, I grew up in a Christian home, and my parents were on fire for God. Um, I knew I was called at, as a young age to preach the gospel, to travel, and uh, do something for the kingdom of God. But as a young age, I even began to run from the Lord. I was, I was born again, eight years old. I remember getting born again. But as I got into my teen years, I really ran from the call of God. I mean, I ran hard, like Jonah. It was, it was awful. I was always swallowed up by the whale and spit out on the shore. It was just over and over again, same cycle. And it, but it got really, really intense, you know, because the enemy wanted to kill me. The enemy had a plan to destroy my destiny to destroy my purpose because he knew that I could make an impact. Just like some of you in here are called to make an impact. God may have called you to be a pastor. God may have called you to be an apostle, a prophet. God may have called you to launch a business and, and, and make money. God may have called you to do something really great for your community, for your family. And the enemy fights you on that. And so 14 years old, I, I was, I was, um, uh, almost OD'd on drugs and alcohol, rushed to the hospital, half an hour away from death. And I just, you know, you'd think that that would wake me up, right? But I just kept running. And I was in and out of jail. I was, I was in and out of rehabs, uh, 20 years old, in a jail cell. And I told the Lord, God, I surrender. I'm tired of running. I was tired of running. I said, Lord, I'll do whatever you call me to do. So I, I went into a team challenge, went through the program, got really on fire for God, and uh, got out of team challenge, and I just began to seek the Lord. I began to fast and pray and go after Jesus. I started having just encounters with the Lord, encounters with the Holy Spirit, being filled with God's love. And I remember being in, in my prayer room and being overwhelmed by the power of God, being overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. And all I could do every day was just get in my prayer room and just pray. And I would just weep uncontrollably under the power of God. And it was really like a burden for souls came on my life. You know how the Bible says that, that Abraham was the father of many nations? You know, Abraham had nations in him. Just like some of you in here, you, maybe God's called you to a nation. Maybe God's called you to a region, a city. You know, God's called you to a nation of people. And uh, I received that burden. And so I, uh, I really wanted to pursue the calling of God on my life. But I got discouraged. And I, I told the Lord, I said, God, if you've really put a call on my life, then you're going to have this prophet, Jeff Jansen, tell me everything that I'm called to do, or I'm not going to go into ministry. I'm just going to not do it. How many of you said a prayer like that to the Lord? Something similar. I don't know if it was right. I don't know if it was wrong, but that's what I prayed. And I told, I told the Lord this. And um, so I, the next service Jeff had in Murfreesboro, I went to the service. And Jeff called me out, and he said, um, Jesse, he called me out. He said, Jesse, uh, God's put a mantle on your life for signs and wonders and miracles. You're going to travel the nations. You're going to see, you're going to see power. You're going to go to Asia. You're going to, you're going to see this, that, and the other. And this is what God's called you to do. And you're going to write books. And I mean, something just hit me. Something different came on my life that day. And I was thinking, like, is he really talking to me right now? I've never seen a miracle. I've never seen, I've never prophesied over anybody. You know, how do you do this? But I received that word, and I held on to that word. So how many of you here 
have had a word from the Lord, something that God has put in your heart or something prophesied over you that you're still contending for? Come on. Hit your neighbor say, keep fighting for me. So, you know, that word I had to press in for, I had to contend for. Never wrote anything. I never even wrote an article. And I just finished writing a book with my wife. So that's pretty awesome. It's like a landmark for my destiny, right? And I'm still on that journey. I'm still climbing the mountain. But praise the Lord, you know, got that breakthrough. You know, and, and I feel like we kind of uh, receive prophetic words. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get a word from the Lord and we'll think, wow, I, I got this breakthrough. I, I know what the Lord's called me to do. But then we just like sit. And we're like, I just need one more prophetic word. I just need one more confirmation. You know, some of us, we, we got a shoebox full of prophecies at our house. Come on, I'm talking to myself because I, I got a shoebox. But what has God called you to do? What, what is the first step towards your purpose, your calling, your destiny? What's the first step towards what God has called you to do? If God's called you to do a business. God's called you to uh, work alongside a ministry. What's the first step towards that? It takes faith. You know, and it's, it's like the Bible says in Hebrews that the children of Israel could not enter into the promise because they didn't mix the word with faith. You know, sometimes all it takes is one prophetic word to change the course of somebody's destiny. And they just take that word and they mix it with faith. Well, I'm called to be an evangelist. Go on a mission trip. I'm called to preach the gospel. Well, what's that look like? I'm called to start a business. It's a first step towards that. Is this okay this morning? We need to be intentional about going after the vision that God's placed in our heart. Going going after what God's called us to do. So 1 Timothy 1.18. I, I love this verse here because it's powerful. And it's Paul talking to his son of the faith, Timothy. He said, This charge I commit unto thee, Timothy, according to the prophecies that went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Somebody say war a good warfare. See, there's a, there's, there's a fight, there's a struggle when you receive that word. You have to fight for that word. Sometimes we over, overly rely on the sovereignty of God. Like, surely if the Lord said this, he will do it. Oh, yes, he will do it, but you have to stand on what God said. Just like we have to stand on the promises of God's word. There's, there's promises in God's word, and there's personal promises that God gives us, but we have to contend for them. Man, I got this word from Sean Boltz. He gave me my address. He told me what I was called to do, but it hasn't happened yet. What's the first step? You know, I got, I got a word that I was going to do all this stuff, and it was overwhelming. I thought, how do I see miracles? What, how do I, well, do, do I need the microphone at the church? No, I don't need that. I'm just going to go to the mall, and I'm going to pray for everybody that I see until I see one miracle, until I see one breakthrough. And that's really how we started our ministry, was just going out into malls and grocery stores and wherever, Target, I mean, getting thrown out of places, you know, just praying for people and believing to see the power of God. And we saw some awesome stuff. Turn with me to 1 Samuel 16.10. Samuel 16.10. I'm going to break a rule here this morning. I'm going to read it off my, my smartphone. I encourage people to bring their Bibles, but I'm breaking this rule one time. I got my Bible this morning. But um, 1 Samuel 16.10 says again. Do you see that again? 
Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. So, give you a little background of the story. And I'll go back to that word again. Because it's important. Give you a little background on this. This is when Saul was king over Israel. He had just fallen. And Samuel, the prophet, is mourning over Saul because he's, he's, he's mourning that the king of Israel just fell. Saul was disobedient to God, and so Israel hangs in the balance. And God speaks to the prophet, and he says, Mourn no more over Saul, but fill your horn with oil and go to Jesse's house and anoint me a king. So Samuel goes to Jesse's house to anoint a king. And Jesse has seven of his sons pass before the prophet. And the Bible says again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. So two times, seven of Jesse's sons passed before Samuel. Nobody believed that God could have called David. Isn't that interesting? Not once, but twice. And then Samuel responds, says unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes hither. See, they had to bring David out from the field, because what was David doing? He was serving his father's sheep. He was just serving. He was just in the secret place, spending time with the Lord. Come on, he was he was off the grid. He was come on, he was he was hidden away. You know, there, sometimes there's a season of preparation. God has you in a place, a season of preparation because he's preparing you for something greater. And you may be thinking, well, man, this is not what I really want to be doing, but be faithful on the little and God will make you ruler over much. Come on, don't despise the day of small beginnings. So here comes David. Come on. The Bible says David looked ruddy. He probably had a beard, you know, a grizzly-looking beard. He might have looked like an ISIS member, a Muslim terrorist with a beard, randomly selected at airports. I don't know what David looked like. I'm describing myself and my situation. But... Uh, <laughs> That's why I shaved, people. That's why, because I got tired of being randomly selected at the airport. And so, <laughs> yeah. And so, the prophet sees David, and he empties that horn of oil over David. He anoints David. David received that word. Didn't look the part, but he received that word. Can you imagine the weight and the responsibility of that word? You're going to be king over Israel. David's probably 16 to 18 years old. Most theologians believe that. But he received that word at 16. Didn't even look the part. I love the scripture in 1 Corinthians where it says that God has not chosen the mighty things of this world. Those that are mighty, those that are noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Isn't that powerful? That God's called you to do something that's bigger than yourself. Why? Because in our weakness, He is made strong. One of the things I love about Paul the Apostle is that he always came back to that place where he was given Jesus the credit for the ability of the power that was in him. He knew it wasn't his ability. He knew his ability was in Jesus. Oh, man, this is good this morning. Are you getting this this morning? So we receive the word from the Lord, and then we think it's going to be easy. How many, how many thought it was going to be easy? Well, what, what God called you to, what God put in your heart. I want to start a business. I want to go into ministry. I want to... I want to be part of a ministry. I want to birth something. I want to do something amazing. 
and we think it's going to be easy. I got the word from the Lord. Sean Bolts prophesied over me. Hallelujah. That I'm a giant slayer. We think just the red carpet. There is red carpet here. We think the red carpet is going to be rolled out before us. It's often not the case. David might have thought that. He got that word. I'm going to be king over Israel. The Lord spoke to me. But see, we often think we get our voice on the platform when we often get our voice in the cave. See, David didn't find his voice on the platform. He found it in the cave. That's where David wrote the Psalms, was in the cave. David received revelation. David received intimacy from the Lord in the cave. His anointing began to develop in that place of process. And see, David faces his first giant, Goliath. He goes down to the brook. He polishes off five stones. And he comes back with those stones, and his brothers say, what do you think you're doing, David? You're going to take down Goliath with stones? What do, you, what do you think you're doing? And what did he do? He defeated that giant. But see, David's greatest enemy wasn't Goliath. His greatest enemy was jealousy. Something Catherine Coleman said that I agree with, she said the greatest sin in the body of Christ is jealousy. We get jealous over somebody else's breakthrough. We get jealous over somebody else's process. But see, when we're just humble and we just believe that the Lord can do the same for us, God will bring us into that blessing. God will bring us into that favor. God will bring us into that breakthrough. Amen? So 1 Samuel 30. Here we go. 1 Samuel 30. Somebody say, Jesse, you're preaching really, really good. Somebody say, Jesse, I mean really good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to mess with you for a minute. Okay. I'm trying to get there on my smartphone. This is why I carry a Bible. Hallelujah. So 1 Samuel 30 says, It came to pass... When David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day. Somebody say Ziglag. Say Ziglag. Try saying Ziglag like five times really, really fast. It's like rubber baby bumpy bumpers. Five times. Ziglag. I've gotten better at it. The third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive that were therein they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and the wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. So here's David and his mighty men. They're, they're out at war, and they return to their village only to find their village burned with fire. Their women and children were taken captive. The worst case scenario just took place. And the men that were fighting with David in the battles, fighting beside him, suddenly turn on David. And they're thinking of stoning David. David David's pretty far from being the king of Israel at this point. How many agree? But what I love about David is he's such a fighter and he's such a warrior that he says, bring me the ephod. And the, the ephod is the garment of praise. The Bible says, I will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. In the midst of that situation, all that, all that heartache, David says, bring me the garment of praise. I'm going to put on the garment of praise. And see, what we find about David is that he's the only person in the Old Testament that was a prophet, a priest, and a king. David was all three. He understood the, the value that comes through praise and worship. 
you know, like Paul and Silas says in the Bible that they were beaten and thrown in jail. I don't, I don't know how they did it, but they began to praise and worship the Lord after they were beaten and thrown in jail. See, praise is the key to breakthrough. I'm, I'm teaching you how to step in to what God's called you to do. I'm telling it's not going to be easy. There, there may be some giants, but but you can step into what God's called you to do. Don't give up. Hit your neighbor. Say, don't give up. So then the next thing that happens is David begins to seek the Lord. He's got the ephod on. He's worshiping the Lord. He's praising the Lord. That's what we need to do sometimes. Instead of getting all frantic and worrying in the natural of what's happening, we just need to get along with the Lord and fast and pray. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I, I, we don't teach on that enough, praying in the Holy Ghost. We need to teach on that more. You don't need another prophetic word. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost and contend for what God's given you. Hallelujah. Come on, there's something powerful about that. There's something powerful about being a warrior and saying it may not look like what God said it was going to look like, but I've got faith to see beyond the circumstance and see beyond what I'm seeing right now and say I can see the vision, I can see the promised land, I can see where I'm going, even when nobody else can see where I'm going, I know where I'm going. I know where the Lord is taking me. Come on, we fight real devils, don't we? Not that, not that we need to focus on the enemy, but we fight real devils, and we have to have those weapons of warfare. It's so important. We were, we're renewing our mind to God's word. We've got, we've got the vision. We've got, we've got our purpose. We, we've got our assignment, and we're making steps towards our assignment. This, this was the heart of David. And David just began to seek the Lord on the matter. He said, Lord, sh shall I pursue after them? Will I overtake them? Will, 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 I, will I recover all? And the Lord said, David, pursue them, for you, were, you will recover all. I say recover all. Come on, it's time for some of you to recover all that the enemy's taken from you. The Bible says when the thief is found out, he has to, he has to repay sevenfold. Somebody say repay. You want to know what David and his men did? They went after that army that had raided their camp, taken their women and children captive, and they came back with the spoil. They came back with everything that was taken from them, but they came back with the spoil. They came back with more than what was taken from them. Come on, double honor for your dishonor. I'm talking to somebody this morning. I'm speaking. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it into your life this morning. 2 Samuel 5, verse 20. Say shaka bam. I'm, try, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get there on my smartphone. Lord, why? Why do people preach off iPads? We need Bibles. Okay. I love this here. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spoke, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And then we, we can keep going down to verse 3. So all the elders of Israel came to Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign. Come on. That means everyone that was fighting David, they, they had to say, okay, this is the king of Israel. Everybody that was fighting you know, David had, had to align with David and say, okay, this is the one God chose. 30 years. 
I like that 30 years. Something about 30. Jesus was anointed at 30. David was anointed as king over Israel, stepped fully into his uh, uh, his his position as king over Israel at 30. I'm 30, so I'm, I'm taking it. Hallelujah. Some of you need to take it for 40 or 50. Come on, 60. 70, I don't I don't want to insult you. 80, you know, come on, I don't know how many. Come on, you're never never too young, you're never too old. I, I like how Caleb, as an old man, had had the had the anointing and the strength of God to say, Give me now this mountain. He didn't he didn't think that it was too old to step into the fullness of God. It was awesome. So, the story of Joseph is similar to David's story. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get in my notes here so I can get back to it. I, I don't want to read the whole thing. I could probably do a few more moments. You know, when, when I grew up in church, though, the, the pastor would say, I'm landing the plane. I'm landing the plane. And you just see the plane just kind of circling the runway and never land. It was good though. I mean, but it was like, man, Bronx is waiting. Like, I'm hungry. <laughs> so, uh, so, so God gave Joseph a dream about his destiny, about his calling. Just like God's given you a dream about your story, your destiny, and He begins to talk about it. He begins to tell everybody what He's called to do. So people got jealous, and they they beat him up and threw him in a pit. And so Joseph is in the pit, and he's thinking, man, this really doesn't look like where I'm supposed to be. This really doesn't look like where where God said that he was taking me. And David went through a whole, or, or Joseph went through a whole lot, but he believed God. He fought, he contended, just like David, to step into the fullness of God. He didn't let go of the fullness of God. What happened 30 years old? He becomes the governor of Egypt. That's powerful. 30 years, man, of contending. Hallelujah. Time to reign. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to reign. You know, Joshua and Caleb believed that they were going into the promised land. Moses sent 12 spies to spy on the land. Ten of the spies said, there's no way we can do this. It's too impossible. I just see in the natural that we can't do this. We're like grasshoppers in the sight of giants. And Joshua and Caleb were men of faith. He said, we're well able to take the land. What God said, we're going to do. There's something powerful about knowing your assignment and knowing your purpose. There's just something powerful about that. Knowing your identity, knowing your assignment, and knowing your purpose. And sometimes the only thing that holds us back is just to discover our assignment. Is this fair? What's your assignment? What is the assignment that that God has given you? Because I believe that every person in this room, I believe that every person on the planet has a book about their destiny. Something that God has predestined you to do on this earth. A purpose and assignment. Is that good? What did Jesus say? He said, I've come to fulfill all that is written in my book. To do your will, O God. There was stuff that was already written about the life of Jesus before it even happened. But Jesus went and fulfilled his destiny, his purpose, his calling. You know, my assignment may look different than your assignment. But God's given me an assignment. David said this in the Psalms. He said, 
Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book were all written the days that were appointed for me, when as yet there was not one of them. God already predestinated you to do some stuff. God's already predestined you to do something. You have a book written about your life. a scroll. No one has a book of destiny. Is this good this morning? I, I, I'd like the worship team to come. I want to pray this morning. I just feel something on this. It, it, it's just something in my heart to see others break forth into their destiny. I want to pray that you fulfill your scroll. I want to pray that the book of your destiny would be unlocked. Is that good? So let's just let's just stand this morning. every destiny, every calling in this room. I pray that every every person this morning would receive a deposit and then I pray that they would be stirred. I pray that they would be encouraged to step into the fulfillment of promise and the fulfillment of destiny, God. We thank you for the destiny of Oklahoma. We thank you for the destiny of this house, of this ministry, what is being birthed out of this ministry school and what is being birthed in this region. Father, we thank you for the supernatural that's that's being birthed out of this region. We thank you, God, that, that it's not just another church, but God, it is supernatural. Father, we're after the heart of heaven. We're after... We're after what you've called us to assign. Uh, we, we're, we're after what you've called us uh, to, to release, Father. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. take a moment and take an offering and if you want to give and sow into Jesse and Amy you can make checks payable to Global Harvest Church and this will all go to them um, and then they're going to minister some more after the offering so yes amen and uh, man who wants to fulfill your assignment amen yeah. God's calling us amen he's calling us as individuals, he's calling us as the body of Christ in this region to break into something greater. Amen. And we're all part of that. We're all part of that as seeing that happen. So, Father, we just want to thank you right now. Father, uh, thank you for the assignment that you've given us individually and corporately. And, Father, we sow this morning into Jesse and Amy. Thank you, Father, for the assignment they have at this moment to the body of Christ. Father, we sow into them. We Thank you for what you're doing through them, Lord. We know that it's good ground. And Father, uh, we just thank you. We bless them this morning with this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. So these guys are going to take up the offering. If you want to give, just sow into them. And uh, let's just continue to believe. This, you know, he's, he's finished his message, but there's more that God wants to do. So keep believing for what the Lord wants to do. Amen. I know.
previously when these guys were with us, we saw three deaf ears opened up the first time you guys came. Amen. I just appreciate how many know that God gives different people in the body of Christ something to give because we all need each other. Amen. So let's just release it back to these guys and what the Lord wants to do for them. So I, I just I want to open it up for those that, that want prayer and we're going to worship and we're just going to lay hands on everybody here for impartation for a breakthrough for you to enter into your destiny Amen How many of you want that this morning? Come on, hallelujah Just, just make your way up here I'm going to pray and uh Pastor Andy, however you guys do it, if you guys do lines, if you guys do rows, or just just flow with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 